state of retail in this country. How about the world? It seems to change every single day. Yet I think there's consistency where there is quality, but you have to know where to look for quality. Take Levi Strauss, the private company that got its start when Levi Strauss opened a dry goods business in 1853 and developed work pants that could hold up under rough conditions. This company basically invented the gene. But since then, it's done a lot more than, than that, which is why the company likes to say it's made of progress. I would add profitable progress because the company's results are superior to just about any publicly traded apparel or retail company I follow. Why is that? What's the secret here? Why don't we ask President and CEO Chip Berg, who is about a lot more than just genes, including a worker well-being initiative that we got to talk about. Mr. Berg, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to yeah, see you, sir. Good to see you, too. Oh, oh let me just move my Eagles jacket like that, that I have that is, your, thank you very much. Levi's Eagles. No, I tell you, this kind of, I regard this as personalized, which I love it. Please have a seat. Absolutely. Thank you. Now, uh, you are a private company, but there are some reporting requirements you right. have because of some debt. Publicly traded debt. Yes, and you've put up some amazing numbers. So I'm trying to figure out, is it because there's fashions back, classics back, or just maybe the ethos that you have? Why is it that you've bucked the trend? Well, I think there are a couple of things. First of all, our strategies are working, Jim. We, uh, about four and a half years ago, we declared three key choices to focus on our profitable core business which generates all the cash, and invest that cash back into the two, to the two things that are gonna drive growth. One is expanding for more. We've got lots of categories where we're underdeveloped on the Levi's brand, and second is become a direct-to-consumer retailer. So that's a big part. We've also got a big global footprint right. of retail stores, and we sell Levi's in 110 countries around the world. And then the last big thing is the brand is resonating again. Right. We've brought the brand back. And that was, uh, that was a big part of the mission when I joined the company. Okay, so let, let's talk about that because you know, we hear about mall traffic being down. And you got the direct consumer initiative. We also hear about the idea that, that young people aren't spending anymore on apparel. Uh, you're contradicting, your performance is contradicting both of those. Right, well, we've grown now three quarters in a row. We've grown three years in a row of profitable top line growth. And it is because we're resonating with consumers again, and it's young consumers. Uh, there is more of a trend back towards authenticity. Right. And, you know, consumers want value at the end of the day. They want value, and they buy into values. And that's what we offer. You know, right. this is a brand that was rooted in delivering a great value. You mentioned it in the opening. Right. Built for the miners, the gold miners. Sturdier pants that are going to last longer. And uh, to some extent, I like to juxtaposition Levi's versus fast fashion. We're the right. antithesis you of are. fast fashion. We are fashion that lasts forever. Okay, now, there's a phenomenon going on, because you mentioned worldwide. I have a place in Mexico. I know this is gonna sound a little odd, but 501 jeans are as much of a currency, it seems to me, a little hyperbole, as the peso. What is going on with say Mexico in 501. And, and it's true, and it actually goes all the way back to when we were kids. When I got out of college, a lot of my friends wanted to, to go tour around Eastern Europe and Russia, and you could travel through Eastern Europe and Russia with a suitcase full of Levi's 501. this is insane! Currency, because of the power of the brand. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, consumers want this brand, and it is as powerful as currency, good well, as gold. Now, we were out in San Francisco and we've been uh, kind of schooled by really great American companies that sustainability is key to attracting the right people, the smart people. You've gone a little step further. You've always had Levi Strauss Foundation, we've all known, but mm -hmm. you've gone a step further in terms of some worker initiatives that I wanna talk about because this is how you attract people who are smart enough to go to work at Levi. Yeah, and in fact, you know, I mean, you were just out in San Francisco last right. week. It, it's a war for talent in San Francisco, and a lot of people that work at our company could just as easily walk down the street and go work at Salesforce or go work at Twitter or Facebook or wherever. Right. Their, their, their skill set is very fungible. A big part of the reason why they work at this company is because of the values of the company and the types of initiatives that we do. And we really talk about profits through principles and the impact that this company can make in the world. And we just announced this worker well-being program, which we've been piloting since 2011, and we're now open sourcing it. And the concept is very simple. Um, it's the 25th anniversary of our terms of engagement, which set the standard for how we were gonna operate with our suppliers around the world. And initially, this, the terms of engagement were really focused on the bottom of the pyramid, you know, safety. Right. 
right? That's why we weren't caught up, touch wood, on any of these issues no, absolutely. In, the, in the apparel industry because we've got stringent standards. The next level up the pyramid, though, is beginning to focus on workers' well-being. You know, we manufacture in a lot of uh, developing markets. The workers in the industry are largely women. And uh, what we wanted to demonstrate, and we initially piloted this through the Levi Strauss Foundation, is we wanted to demonstrate to factory owners that if they invested in the well-being of their workers, that it would generate a positive return. And what we discovered is for every dollar we invested, there was a $4 return to the factory $4. owner. $4 return in reduced absenteeism and lower turnover. And it, it makes sense. And so now it's scalable because the business owners see that this is something that's worth investing in. Well, I'm so glad you talked about that because we've been negligent, I felt. We talked about it with my executive producer, Regina Gillian. This is something that we must talk about. And listen to the, to the profitable imperative makes it even more like what Mad Money should be doing. I want to thank Chip Berg, Levi Strauss and Company President and CEO. Some brands really last. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.